God, Father, Son, and Spirit, gather us together to worship. We come hungry to meet you. Let us pray. Loving God, threefold one, you have gathered us in, welcoming us and making yourself present among us. We come to dwell. We come to dwell in the presence of the threefold God. Giving God, Creator, our source, our goal, our life, creating us a wise heart, open to everything that is good and brings life. We come to dwell. We come to dwell in the presence of our Creator. So let us worship. Hymn 184. Hymn 184. Sing to the Lord a joyful song. Forgive us. In your mercy, 
bless us with wisdom to discern your will. Bless us with grace to forgive others as you forgive us. Amen. Hear the word of God from John's Gospel, chapter 6, reading verses 51 uh, to 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever he eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves. How can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, 
and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Unless you <coughs> eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Sometimes it feels in our day and age that British society has no time for Christianity. It has rejected it. It sometimes feels as though it's more difficult to be a Christian than a member of another faith or of no faith because everyone else seems to have their rights protected more than a Christian does. Some of the situation we find ourselves in is grounded in misunderstanding. And that's not new. Since Jesus walked the roads of Palestine and spoke to anybody who would listen to him, there's always been misunderstanding about what Christians are and what they stand for. In the early years of the church, the Roman Empire was relentless in its persecution of Christians. It levelled all kinds of accusations against them. In the second century, there were two very strong Christian supporters called Athenagoras and Justin Martyr, Martyr. And they both recorded that the main accusations laid against Christians were atheism, because they seemed to be talking about three gods, incest, because they talked about God the Father, and cannibalism. To those of us who still follow Christian teaching and practice to this day, these seem like ridiculous accusations, but that wasn't how it felt then. At that time, there was no social media. Now there's, there's a lovely idea. There was no fake news as we know it. But rumours could and did spread. And one that abounded was that Christians were cannibals. And the claim found its origin in this passage from John's Gospel, where Jesus speaks of the necessity of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. In truth, those words which Jesus spoke only truly make sense in the light of his encounter with his 12 closest disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem the night before he died. Because then he spelled out that his body would be broken, his blood would be spilled, and his disciples were witness to the fact. On that night, he gave them a significant way to remember the importance. And those who gathered at that table must have remembered the day when he told them that to eat this flesh and drink this blood was the only way to truly have life as a Christian. Then they realized that this was symbolism. Without it, they would live they could live, but with it, they would live fully. It was the extra dimension. There are extra dimensions in so many things in life, aren't there? The special ingredient 
that you know will make a meal just that bit better. The finishing flourish, the final touch, the inspiration that take a speech from ordinary to inspirational. Now the margins between these can be very narrow, but the special touches make such a difference. I've never been a very good baker. I can follow instructions in a recipe book, but I have to say the end result is never more than edible, if I'm lucky. Some folk, on the other hand, can turn out the lightest scones, the perfect Victoria sponge. All I can do is get by, because I don't have the right touch, or the knowledge of the secret that will raise the level of my baking. A painting that looks flat can suddenly be transformed by the application of a few brush strokes in the right colour, in the right place. All it takes is the skill to know what and when. Without the proper nutrients, our bodies will continue to work, won't they? But they won't thrive as they should. If we had a vitamin deficiency or a hormonal imbalance, these will need to be put right before we flourish as we can. Jesus wanted his disciples to realise that to live fully as God intended, they needed to do more than just go through the motions of living. They shouldn't just be prepared to be alive. They should want to thrive. He was not encouraging cannibalism. He was wanting his followers to realise that beyond the very basics of life, food, drink, warmth and shelter, there were spiritual needs that he alone could meet. When you bake a loaf of bread, you blend all the ingredients together, don't you? And crucial amongst these is the element that changes it from dough into something that will rise. Yeast, the living element that raises it. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. And it's still true for us today. If we don't allow Christ to be a living entity within us, we will still be alive, but we won't live as God made us to live. In those days when everything can be explained or explained away, the problem that people have with faith is that the spiritual things of life are still a mystery. They cannot be solved or explained away. But those spiritual mysteries are actually the things that are God's creation that enrich our lives and make them endure all things in life, in death, and forever. Let us pray. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's sing now from Mission Praise number 261, Mission Praise 261, I am the bread of life.
now that I've discovered where the offering plate is, we will present our offerings in our time of giving, all the time.
God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon and remain with you now and always. Amen.